Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks so much for joining us again. My name is Nate Petrie from TTX. Um, I know we're all getting used to these Zoom type calls, um, but thanks for uh, for bearing with us with our video and our setups and all that sort of stuff. But we have some uh, some great information that we wanted to share. Uh, at TTX, uh, we do a lot of events throughout the years. A lot of times in, in previous normal years, those are at Indians games and such. Um, but throughout the year, we've been doing some Zoom calls with different topics to stay, uh, you know, being, being an educator like we want to be to the marketplace and informing people on certain things that we do. But today we're super excited about our topic. Um, we asked uh, Brandon Kinney, our CEO, to join us uh, today to talk about uh, managed services at TTX and how we deliver that and uh, why we think we are better uh, and why and how we uh, became a managed services provider. So we're super excited about that. Um, a little bit of logistics. So we're going to be using the Q&A uh, chat uh, down at the bottom of Zoom. So please, if you have any questions as Brandon's uh, talking, please submit those uh, questions there and we'll address those uh, towards the end. Uh, we're looking at like 30 to 40 minutes of total time. So again, thanks so much for being here. And at this time, I'll, uh, I'll ask Brandon to join us. Well, good morning, everybody. It's a privilege to uh, share with you today. Today's a limited edition or a special edition maybe would be better. Uh, I, I've never given this presentation via webinar, so that'll either be an encouragement to you as an attendee because you get to see something that hasn't been seen or it's a potential threat to the success of it. I um, hope you'll bear with me. I'm used to being a, an evangelist for TTX and our brand and also our managed services offering, which I think is at the core of who we are. It's, it's probably the purest sense of what TTX is to deliver managed services and a professional services offering. Um, I'm used to doing that in person, uh, as we go through the sales process, but not so much in a webinar. So I've got some slides that really will just be talking points more than anything. Um, and I'm going to switch over to that now. Uh, but again, just want to say thank you for uh, for joining us today. And I hope that you find the content valuable. Um, in today's world, I know that there's not a whole lot of grace left for webinars that aren't executed well. So hopefully, um, Hopefully I can nail this one uh, and I hope that you can see my screen. Um, so the topic for today is managed services and I uh, want to start by really explaining the brand, um, the why we do managed services and how uh, we've gotten to this place. Um, the brand vision that we have for our organization is to be the most trusted partner in our market. And uh, to inspire that trust um, by focusing on people. So inspiring others that people matter in our industry. Um, we wanna be the absolute most trusted partner that you've ever worked with. And I realize in today's world that trust is a pretty equivocal term. Uh, it's thrown around a lot, especially in the business world and using it is almost like kind of not saying anything at all. And what I wanna endeavor to do is the first few minutes here just try to outline how significant it is to us and that we really do mean it and it is really our heartbeat as a company to be trusted and then talk about how that influences the way that we deliver managed services and position ourselves in the market uh, to be the most trusted partner as a goal is very lofty and it's pretty tough to measure so i want to share with you a few ways that we've languaged it internally and the way that we measure how we're doing. Uh, first off, this is a shot of our lobby, which right now nobody is visiting because um, we're not having visited in the building as I'm sure is, is the case for everybody else. But one of the ways we distilled the word trust is into these four C's and um, kind of distilling out when you have a trusted relationship, whether it's a spouse or a friend or a business partner, what are the elements of that? And there's a lot of ways to to go about that, but these are, this is the way that we've approached it and the way that we talk about it internally. Um, these four C's, and that, that's a part of the parlance internally here at TTX. Uh, the first, up, first one is to be competent. You obviously, in order to trust us, we need to be able to do the things you need for us to do. So to have demonstrated experience in the fields of expertise, to have uh, the certifications and the, the vendor affiliations that uh, check the boxes for somebody when it comes to um, trusting a partner. 
uh, character, which is here second, really it's the underpinning of all, uh, all the trust that we're trying to develop. And it, it's kind of the scaffolding of, of who we are, but uh, to be fair, moral and honest, um, again, that is kind of equivocal and probably goes without saying um, most people have character somewhere in their brand or their core values. Um, but we recognize that we're never going to get to the place we want to be as a partner if character doesn't underlie everything that we do. Um, and, and that's really how we entered the managed services market 11 years ago. And that is, is the foundation of it today. And I'll, I'll get into that when we get into some of the product specifics. Uh, consistency is probably one of the most significant when it comes to specifically managed services. Uh, most of the tasks associated with managing IT, um, specifically as, a, as an MSP, in terms of monitoring network elements, servers, devices, um, providing firmware updates and providing backups, um, measuring utilization and speeds of different elements of the network. Uh, it just needs to happen the same way every time uh, in terms of TTX delivering that for a client. Uh, when that's inconsistent, it really breaks down the overall trust in the product. Uh, you know, when, when there's a miss from a monitoring standpoint or there's a miss from a response time on a ticket, uh, that it creates concern. And, and in most cases, as a managed service provider, we're being trusted as the kind of the watchman on the wall to be the first line of defense to see things happening. And so that consistency is critical and is, is baked into managed services offering. And then of course, capacity is just being able to meet the need as it comes, having the, the right amount of people having the right tools. Um, and for, for me as the CEO, that means just making sure that we're aligned in terms of internal resources and the client demand that we have, the amount of engineers, the, in the different specialties, the, the systems that we use that they all meet the client needs. So these four C's um, is, is one way that we've messaged that internally and is, is, is a language that we use. Another one is Really simply, this is a shot of our conference room, which is it's nothing special. And again, it's empty right now, but uh, is the idea to imagine that the client or you, um, any of us, any that would be joining us today are in the room with us. Uh, I found that it, making a decision on a ticket, so speaking specifically on managed services, uh, how do we respond to a ticket? Uh, we can respond in an email, we can respond with a phone call, uh, we can, if a, a cell phone number is provided, we can call a person on a cell phone, we can text, but there's different ways that we can communicate, just speaking of one specific instance. How do we be the most trusted partner in that scenario? I think the easiest question to ask for an engineer, for somebody in sales, or for somebody in operations and accounting, and the same for me as an executive is to just imagine the client is sitting right there next to me. Uh, what is the right decision? It's pretty easy to get to the, the right answer when I think you view it in that light. And so it's a little bit clever on our part to have this in the conference room where we would have clients and, and for clients to see that, but uh, it isn't just uh, brand or uh, brochure fodder, uh, this language. Um, it's, it was something interesting. When we put these things on the wall, there was a way in which it made it all more real for everyone, including leadership, because um, you're looking at it. And uh, the last thing any, what any of us wants to be is double-minded or a hypocrite. And so the standards have been the standards, and I'll get into a little bit of the timeline when these standards were developed, but um, having them there as a beacon for us and as a reminder has been really beneficial. Uh, to touch on the history of TTX, uh, I'm not going to get into every year here, as I, you might be dreading when you see the slide, but uh, we, we celebrate our 40th year this year, so it was a significant milestone for us, and it was a very interesting year to be celebrating 40 years. Um, there's a whole other story about, you know, lining up as a second generation business. Uh, so myself and my partner, Scott, were second generation owners of the business. Our, our dad started the company together in 1980. Um, there's a whole story about, you know, trying to, as a second generation, um, build the brand and be great stewards of it and to celebrate a 40th year um, in a year like 2020. Uh, so there's been a lot of challenge in it, but there's also been a lot of confidence to come from it uh, as we have dealt with it. But I'll leave that for another day. Uh, so just a high level. So for the first 25 years of the company, uh, the brand name was Teletronics, and we were really focused on voice. 
So voice products, um, on-premise phone systems, carrier services, the, the phone lines and internet access as that came along. And the cabling, infrastructure wiring, the low voltage, you know, da voice and data cabling in buildings. And it wasn't until 2005 that we started transition into uh, IT and managed services. And that was when we moved into voice over IP. So we took on uh, the Shortel platform, which is now part of the Mitel family of uh, products. Uh, we took that on and for us, it was a really significant tr transition and we didn't know all of the significance at the time. Uh, previous technology with digital phone systems, it was clear VoIP was the next generation. There were a lot of platforms, Cisco being the one that was most proliferated in the market at that time. Um, we took on Shortel and didn't recognize at the time, just, you know, it, I've related it kind of like photography or in music where um, the music industry changed very quickly from CDs to MP3s. So at the end of the day, you're still listening to music. That's ultimately what's happening, but the way it's done is completely different. Same with photography where, you know, I, I can remember going to camera shops and buying a cool camera and film. And of course, um, a few months after digital photography became a real technology you could buy as a consumer, uh, we're still taking pictures. Ultimately, that's what we're doing with a camera, but the way that it's done is completely different. We had that transition with Shortel, uh, putting, phones on the data network, um, installing PoE switches, installing software on servers in the environment, installing desktop software for UC and the ability to communicate, um, managing quality of service across the wide area network, multi-site deployments. Um, it was a big change for us. And so we learned kind of on the fly um, that we needed to really change the business. Um, and that was, again, a kind of a time in transition from first generation to second generation. So Scott and I um, started to take over the business in 2005. And then what we saw is we were deploying servers and switches and wide area network elements that um, there was a need from our clients to manage those uh, elements that we were deploying. Um, most of it, we were just deploying to support the voice solution we sold. It wasn't as if we were trying to become a data company at that point. Uh, which I think is kind of significant in that we didn't we didn't get into managed services or IT um, because we felt like it was time for us to you know get rid of the heritage of voice and restart or because we felt like IT services were more profitable um, or getting into the recurring revenue piece was more profitable. We did it because uh, our clients were asking us for it. We had built a really strong brand and voice and uh, as we deployed solutions for voice over IP uh, the clients were looking for us to, to support those elements um, when they were all evolving in IT teams, voice and IT teams were condensing in single teams and all that. So we started offering managed services in 2009. So we're in our 11th year of that. And uh, that was also a changing of our stripes as well from a really a reactive voice support company to a proactive uh, managed service provider. Um, and we started slow, you know, it, it started with moving some of our voice clients into uh, managed services clients and learning how to do that well. Uh, we didn't get it perfect to start, but um, a lot of our clients have been with us since the very beginning. I could give you a list of clients that, you know, bought phone systems from us in the 80s and transitioned to voice over IP and then into managed services. And I think that character and ultimately us, the, the, the core values that we're driven by as a company have driven, has driven that loyalty. Um, so building managed services, gathering steam there. And in 2014, we rebranded the company from Teletronics to TTX. And the brand vision that I shared earlier to be the most trusted partner and a lot of the other elements that you're seeing here really came out of the platform. A lot of that, again, was second generation kind of casting a new vision for what we wanted to be in the future. Um, we uh, grew So at, at that point, and I'll get into some of the details of roughly 40 employees um, and uh, both voice and IT services really blended as offerings. Um, it was at that time that in many ways we're, we're a 40 year old company and in some ways a six year old company because we're really set out with a new brand, a new vision, and a new product set from what we had started with originally as um, you know, like kind of recasting of who we wanted to be. Um, so, and, and of course, fast forward to today, uh, 
right now uh, we're sitting at roughly 45 employees. We've been on a consistent year over year growth rate. This year is a little different um, as most companies. Uh, we had a growth strategy for this year and that was what, what I built in for our 40th year strategy was to grow significantly. And then of course, March, everything changed. And um, I'm really proud to say that the company has sailed these seas uh, really healthily. So financially still in a really healthy position. Uh, we've, we've kept all of our employees. Of course, IT has been in high demand, so I'm grateful to be in this industry. But uh, we stand in a, in a very healthy position despite the circumstances around us, which I think is as much a testament to anything that our roots are strong as an organization with a long history. Um, I'll br touch on this briefly. So going to the brand platform, this is, this is really uh, the heartbeat behind managed services. So at the top level, Every client that we have has some, some product needs, whether it's Microsoft licensing servers to go along with that, desktops, um, of course, in the voice space. Um, the product needs, they're pretty uh, ubiquitous in the market. So most products do very similar things, whether it's a backup product or an antivirus product, security product. Um, there's a lot of parity out there. So we have vendors in our portfolio so that we can fulfill those needs, but we feel like TTX ultimately is needed in the marketplace and has a place in it to deliver these service needs on the left side and culture needs on the right side. So we perceive that clients need assistance or help, they need consultation and they need strategy. And we per perceive from an approach, from a culture standpoint that clients need us to be very approachable, to be very predictable and to have a long-term vision or to be sustainable. Um, this is how we have essentially season the managed service product through these things is that um, the market really doesn't need another MSP. There are plenty of those. I'm sure, you know, if you're in the market for it or interested in it, I get at some level probably are being on this call today and taking your time to do it. You know, there's plenty of options and there's options that are um, just very small businesses, maybe just a couple of engineers or you know, five, 10 employees. And then there are very large providers that have a nationwide or even international presence with thousands of engineers. Um, so market is not in need of another MSP, but uh, I do think specifically um, on the culture side, there is a need for a managed service provider who is these things, um, approachable, predictable, and sustainable. Um, specifically on the approachability, um, what I find in the 11 years that we've been doing managed services is that most people approach us for a quote or want to talk to us about how we do managed services because they're, they have two main concerns. One, their current provider, whether it's an internal IT person or an external provider, is not a good communicator. And second, they don't feel like they have their long-term success in mind. So being proactive would go into that category or, um, you know, really taking care of things well, um, being responsible and uh, just kind of just a general sense of lack of care. And I think engineering, generally speaking, can be a little sterile. Uh, it's, it's ones and zeros, it's blinking lights. And a lot of what's in managed services, as I said earlier, is germane stuff. It's keeping things up to date. It's making sure things are on when they go down, making sure they come up again very quickly. And a lot of what uh, clients, I believe, are looking for from us or from anybody that's going to take care of that is, are you going to communicate well with me or are you approachable? And are you really going to take care of me long term and be proactive? And that's essentially how we um, made the product. And as the CEO, I'm in a unique spot that I get to, you know, speak for the whole organization. Uh, it's something that I take very seriously. I count it as a real privilege to do that. Uh, it's not, it's not something I say flippantly that I get to basically tell you how we deliver managed services. Um, and coming into a presentation like this, I do sometimes have a sense of nervousness because I recognize the, the strength of the people that I'm representing and wanting to do them the credit that they're owed. Uh, we have a great team of people here that take these cultural things very seriously. And as the mouthpiece for that, I just want to get it right for them uh, and represent them well. So just a kind of deep, this is just kind of getting to the skinny, I guess, of the facts. So we have the, the 
VoIP um, business still. We have the MyTel partnership, um, which is one of the anchor partnerships, but we also have an extensive cloud portfolio, including products like Teams, uh, 8x8, Ring Central. Uh, we have a really open stance to the voice market, if that's something you wanted to talk to us about. I think there is a range of solutions that make sense today um, from the from a traditional premise-based business to, to cloud or a premise-based solution to a cloud uh, solution and, and honestly believe that. Uh, from an IT services standpoint, so our knock is located here in Strongsville, right? Now it's virtual, um, right now the lights in the actual room that those engineers sit, which is a beautiful room right now that's unused. Um, everybody's working from home. Uh, we have 22 engineers on staff today. Um, I would say, you know, our position in the market is, is, is generalist. So we have engineers for the network with Cisco and Ruckus and sonic wall certifications for firewalls. Uh, you Um, and then on the server side, um, having Office 365 and those types of certifications along with VMware, um, looking at network elements, desktops, and servers. Um, we offer uh, backup and disaster recovery solutions. That data logo below is, is our uh, primary partner for that. We've worked with others, but um, we like the data solution. It, makes, it has a high um, total cost of ownership and return on investment. Um, all of our agreements are governed by an SLA, and that SLA is on response time. So. Uh, again, going back to the consistency bullet point from earlier, um, we hope that in the engagement through flushing out our contract and understanding who we are, the SLA is really just a backstop, but I, we understand the need for it in that there's a, a shared um, understanding of what we're committing to. So that SLA, and I'll show you how we report on that. Uh, we use ConnectWise and LabTech, that's our CRM and remote monitoring management platform. Uh, we have client portal for that and also bright gauge which we use for uh, dashboarding and also for our quarterly business review so i'm going to step into that now so what what we have as a, a protocol well maybe before i do that here's a screenshot of that knock right now that doesn't have anybody in it um this is in our office uh the wall there we believe in people your people our people and our partners we kind of going back to the inspiring um the market that people matter in our industry um we look at that three ways. Um, first, internally, if we're not as a leadership team here valuing our people, then it's gonna be very difficult for them to make you feel valued. So um, we start with that. And uh, the, of course, your people being client and then partners, uh, we really do care about those partnership relationships. Don't treat them like I think traditional vendors do. Uh, but to share now a couple of the reports that power the QBR. Um, again, going back to the four C's, in order to build that trust, I think we just need to be really transparent. And that is going along with the uh, the reasons I said people fire their current managed service provider or an IT person that takes care of this stuff. Um, being proactive, communicating well. Um, we, we want to have full transparency in what we're doing. I think there's a well-worn rut in managed services to just pay a lump sum per month and not really know what you're getting. And it's kind of a game that both the client and the provider are playing where um, the provider hopes that they're providing just enough value. It's kind of like an insurance premium where, Hey, if I ever need them, they're there and I, I pay this amount of money per month per month and it's worth it. And the client feels, you know, really um, committed to whether that either that IT person or managed service provider almost where they have kind of the control because you can't really do anything in the business without the IT behind it. And so there's this kind of exchange that happens and it's not fully flushed out and transparent. We want to be really, we want to earn uh, the money that we're getting paid by you every quarter, every month, every day. So um, these reports that I'll share with you now are all from our ConnectWise database, which when you're a managed service client, you have a ConnectWise portal for ticketing. You can see all the open tickets, the engineers that are working on it, how long it's been open, who opened it. Um, just again, so you can see exactly the amount of time used, so you can see exactly how much time is being spent on your account by our engineers. Um, but the reports are on demand, so you can run these reports anytime. We commit to a quarterly business review process where we share this report with you and go through it. All of these, um, it's not really going to be, I can't show it to you here in the PowerPoint, but all of these bar graphs 
our live data. So when we send you this report, you can actually click on the blue box there for Rob and you can see he opened 60, it looks like something like 65 tickets in 90 days. Uh, you can click on that and see all the tickets that were opened and you can see the response time and you can see the amount of work that was done. Um, and see, so you can see exactly what's happened between TTX and your organization. Uh, this is just one that's tickets opened by user in the last 90 days. I'll show you a few others here. This is a SLA response report. So you can see in this particular case, uh, it's one of the clients that I'll, I'll reference a little bit later here. Um, we share with you exactly the different priority of the tickets and the SLA, um, in this case, fully green. Uh, that's not always the case that we don't from a response time standpoint, we're not perfect, but we're shooting for 95% or better in terms of response time. And we're meeting that uh, across the board right now. Um, you can see that again, this is all live data. You can go into these tickets, um, average response time last 90 days. You can see that in minutes, um, our average response time to the uh, critical medium and low tickets there. Uh, survey reactions. So in this case, there were 16 surveys submitted by the client in the last 90 days in this particular example report. Um, what we do for that, because we honestly want to know how we're doing, is uh, every time a ticket closes, you'll be sent on the close out. So this is a part of the, the natural process. You're not getting sent a separate survey link. The close out email on a ticket will have at, in the signature line, a green, yellow, and red kind of smiley face, middle face, and brown face. Um, you click on that, that's all it takes for us to get an impression. You don't have to fill anything else out. We wanted to make it really easy so we could actually measure this. Um, you have the opportunity to provide comments if you want, but you don't have to. Um, we're measuring that and reporting that on that to you. So again, going back to the most trusted partner, this is a report that we would envision reviewing with whoever signed the contract and, and whoever else would want to, to see it, whether it could be senior business leadership and or it could be somebody in the trenches in an environment. Um, we want to talk about this. You know, here's how we're doing. We want to solicit more response and we want to be transparent with it so you know exactly how we're doing. Um, I like when we receive, I look at the um, surveys on a daily basis that our Joshua, who's our director of operations, looks at it more than daily. Um, I'm looking at it daily. I love sharing the, the wins with our team and uh, also looking for opportunities for improvement. So when we get neutrals or negatives, which we don't get often candidly, we're averaging over 96% customer satisfaction. Um, but when we do get them, I love it, whether it's an improvement to ticketing, usually it has to do with just an improvement to our ticketing platform, um, which we've made a lot of improvements as a result of those. So that's one of the things we include. Um, getting into some of the other things, so this is gonna be reporting on the actual elements in your environment. So. This is a workstation patch status report. Uh, so we actually, again, this is all drill down data. So um, it, this was a live report. You click on any one of these pie graphs and it would take you to the workstations that are missing the patches. Um, it just, workstation patching is something that has a lot of variables to it, um, but it's something that we're watching and managing and we can uh, prioritize different elements to make sure that, that if there are some that haven't been on site for a while or need to be retired, we can do that. Uh, we're, we're looking at server, here, this is a disk utilization report. So we can see the servers that are online here and the different drive statuses. Um, and there, there's a lot more. So we're, we're reporting on every element that we uh, manage. So this is just kind of a sampling of some of that. And I, I hope just again speaks to that desire to be trusted and want to share this data with you so you know exactly what's happening and also be held accountable for how we're doing with it. Um, so I'm getting close to closing up here, Nate, just to give you a heads up. Um, just to, I just wanted to share a couple of quotes. Um, I'm not gonna read these, but Brad is uh, one of our clients today, um, a company called RW Sidley. They're a, a managed service client of ours. Um, Dan Betting is also a client of ours on managed services. He's the uh, director of technology for the Cleveland Institute of Music. And Ryan Cummins, also a managed service client of ours um, from Screen Valley Engineering, which is in, in the uh, quote there. Um, just a, a few things that I recognize that case studies and quotes are um, don't provide a ton of value uh, just because everybody has those uh, but uh, we have a bunch of them and the response that we solicit from clients is pretty emotional which um, which I hope speaks to the 
our aim, which is a deeper relationship, not just, you know, TTX provided a, a bill of services at the price that they specified, but um, TTX is an organization worth partnering with their real business partner, and they take care of us in a way that um, is consistent with the brand. So those are the kind of comments that I really love. And, and we have a bunch of clients in that category that we can introduce you to separately. So I mentioned the 40th anniversary. I thought this would be a, um, a good slide to maybe just uh, end on and say that, um, you know, we're TTX is um, as a brand, there's a lot of stuff I've shared about the brand, but ultimately um, we're only as valuable as the people, uh, the people that we have here that support our clients and the people that would be supporting you as a managed services client um, and our clients themselves. Um, we're really, I'm just so grateful in this year specifically to have, um, to be an essential business. Uh, I'm glad that 40 years ago, my dad didn't start a restaurant chain, um, but also glad that uh, not only have we been you know, legally essential, in this year of business closures and things, but we've been functionally essential that uh, our clients have needed us. And it's been a call that we've been really happy to answer and be there for them. So uh, I think I'll stop there, Nate, and I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen and hand it back to you um, and uh, leave some time for questions. Yeah, we have a couple maybe uh, to make it a little more personal. Yeah, join me here on video. So um, thanks a lot, Brandon. We, we do have a couple of questions here, um, and those can keep coming in as we uh, do Q&A for maybe five or six minutes here before we close. So the first question was uh, around SLAs. Uh, the question specifically is, you mentioned you have an SLA. Could you talk about that in a little mm -hmm. bit more detail? Yep. Yeah, it's uh, the, the critical, medium, and low. What we found, we used to have four um, priorities of tickets, and we found that there was really no difference between critical and high, so we combined that into the critical, medium, and low priority. Uh, low priority tickets are generally like longer term MACs, things that you know, aren't as urgent. But uh, critical is uh, response time within an hour, medium is within two hours, and low is within four hours. Uh, so that response time and the SLA in terms of response time, as you know, managed services, there's, there's a whole variety of weights. So we don't have a, a resolution SLA, we have a response SLA that we measure. Um, and that's the one in the contract is that, um, again, I, I think it, it addresses what I feel is the biggest gap in a lot of offerings for managed services and individual IT people is just how important am I to you? Is this urgent? Are you going to move other things out of your way to get this done for me? And that's the concern with the managed service provider. Um, a lot of times when a client's considering moving to a managed service provider is you have a lot of clients. I'm just one of those that pays you every month. How important am I? Uh, I think response time is probably the biggest indicator of not just an auto reply. I should note that it, this is not just an email go back saying, hey, we got your ticket. This is an engineer talking to you, uh, interacting with you about an issue. Really good. Um, next one, uh, kind of a more simple question, Brandon. So does your contract for MSP have terms or is it month to month? Well, um, by default, it's a three year, we have a, a 36 month contract. Um, I know going through the process and talking with folks, it's, it's painful to change IT providers. Uh, there's a lot of fear in most clients because you're talking about financial systems, you're talking about um, you know, really heavy stakes if you don't get it right. So generally, they're look, looking to partner for, for a while you know, looking at kind of like an employment, when you hire somebody, you're expecting it's gonna be more than a, a month by month engagement. Um, however, we don't really have any um, terms in the contract in terms of cancellation. So we don't, I don't want a client to be connected to TTX only because the contract says they have 20 months left. Uh, we really don't ever have this happen, but what I've told many clients is that if, if it's not working for whatever reason, uh, you guys can leave at any time. Uh, the whole idea here is that uh, we're doing something different. You have other options out there and um, a piece of paper. The way that we talk about it a lot is that um, getting somebody to sign a contract is not being the most trusted partner. It's getting them to have faith that we will be the most trusted partner. So conversation like this, hopefully we're engendering some faith that we will be a trusted partner, but it is not trust yet. It's faith. 
Um, trust is when we've developed that in the relationship. So if we're not developing the trust, then I don't want to lock somebody into a, a contract just based upon what may be perceived as missed expectations. I love that. Uh, the next one, just two more left. Uh, do you still deliver voice solutions? Uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take that one, Brandon, let you grab sure. coffee or such. So uh, we get to, the answer is, um, today our business is about 50, 50, which we're super proud of. 50% of our business comes from reoccurring contracts like and its services and 50% from project work. Um, I bring that all up because voice is a lot different, uh, now than it was even. 10, 11 months ago, technology has really advanced uh, through this crisis that we're in with COVID. And our approach to voice more than ever is very um, conversational and figuring out what's best for your business. So that can mean premise still uh, from time to time, but certainly hosted voice conversations about teams integration and, and, and getting people onto teams voice, all those things are in play with a conversation with TTX, which we're, we're super proud of having that ability to take that approach to the marketplace where we're very much vendor agnostic on the voice side and have opportunity to uh, support and deploy a multitude of solution that makes sense for, for the client. Anything you'd add there, Brandon? Well said. No, it's perfectly said, Nate, well done. It's on top of our minds right now, isn't it? The, the mm, yeah. with, with COVID and working from home. Uh, last one, what is your average size customer for managed services? Go ahead, Brandon. Yeah, well, it ranges, but I would say that uh, it's, it's in the 75 to 100 users uh, in that environment. Um, we have clients significantly larger than that. Uh, one of the ways that we approach, uh, I should say, a sub type in the way that we approach managed services is that we don't come in lock, stock and barrel, um, make a client change their technology to only ones that we prefer. And we don't make a client sign for every element in their network. Um, what we found is that, especially in that size range, you know, 50 users to 200 users, let's say as a wider average, um, there's a lot of different potential for IT staff members. So it might be somebody really knows servers that's an existing employee but they don't know network equipment and they don't want to do desktop support uh, vice versa could be true where really comfortable with desktops maybe entry level a few years in um, i already have that person on staff it's great to have a generalist in the building but we don't have the server expertise in-house uh, so what we'll do is customize that so we have larger clients generally speaking that are more customized to maybe just local and wide area network or server but the full across all the areas desktop network and server, the average client somewhere in the 75 to 100 users. Yeah, I think we had a question that just came in. I think that you answered, but I'll make sure I answer it directly. So the question is, we have most of our equipment managed, but we have items like and some internal items that are not. Can you just manage these items? So the answer is yes. Um, our portfolio of managed services can be divvied out as needed for different use cases for different companies. So it doesn't have to be an all or nothing. Um, mm -hmm. Like we're unique in that. I don't, I'm not sure if we are or not, but we certainly have the ability to support different aspects of people's IT environments on what's needed. So the answer is yes. Yeah. And that comes a lot from where we started going back to how do we end up here in 2020? Uh, you know, we started as a voice company and we, then we started selling network elements because most clients didn't have POE in their network in 2005. So in order to put VoIP phones on the system, we needed to, to install POE switches. Um, Shortel was always server agnostic. So we would generally install a server or add it to a client's um, existing server environment. Usually we'd provide one. Uh, so we started out by providing specific elements and the clients then asked us to support those specific elements from a what would be now considered a managed services standpoint monitoring support so we kind of from the beginning have not had this pure play i guess maybe the way to say it managed services where it's uh where it's everything um, we kind of started a la carte we have a lot of the majority of our clients do have all the elements supported, but we still have a significant contingent, probably 30% of our managed services clients, where we're just supporting specific elements rather than the whole thing. 
Well, I, uh, I like 45 minute uh, WebExes. The, the hour I feel like stretches, it does for me anyway, when I uh, need to watch something. So, and it's not because we don't have the paid for version of Zoom. We, we could go over 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I wanted to just close and thank everybody for attending. Um, hopefully something sparked uh, uh, an interest to have a one-to-one -one conversation. Um, in an effort to maybe follow up with that and see if that's potentially a possibility, um, we'll send out um, one last email based on this conversation with some links to uh, two videos. One video will be Brandon talking about the four C's a little bit more in detail, just a five or six minute video. And then uh, one of our favorite videos that we recently did uh, is with one of our most trusted partners, uh, uh, Quality Castings and the managed services company of ours that it's a bit of a testimonial video that again, five or six minutes. So our account uh, executive will send that out to you and hopefully uh, we can continue the conversation and, and maybe create a raving fan out of you folks as a customer of ours. So thanks so much for everyone joining and uh, have a great day. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for your time, everyone. We don't take it for granted. Have a great day.